Bismillahirrahmanirrahim dear students in this video we will discuss about ecosystem based adaptation strategy so ecosystem based adaptation strategies include a number of practices already mentioned including sustainable water management sustainable management of grasslands establishment of diverse agricultural system and an example of eco based adaptation so sustainable water management we are river basins aquifers flood plains and their associated vegetation are managed in a way that provides water storage and flood regulations so it is very simple uh, river basins aquifers flood plains uh, and their association uh, with vegetation and managed in a way that provides water storage and flood uh, regulations it is very important then sustainable management of grasslands and range lands to enhance uh, pastoral livelihoods and increase resilience droughts and flooding so sustainable management and grassland is also very important for livelihood uh, and uh, uh, for the livestock as well because those people who have their livestock so they need to have the grassing grasslands for their uh, uh, animals in order to uh, fulfill their requirement then establishment of diverse agriculture system is we are using indigenous knowledge of specific crop and livestock varieties maintaining crop and livestock diversity and conserving diverse agricultural landscape can help to secure food provision and changing local climate conditions an example of ecosystem based adoption adaptation comes from Brought from regions of Maharashtra and in India, where rehabilitation of a watershed ecosystem helped to improve soil conditions, increase water availability, regenerate. So, improved soil conditions and water availability regeneration was made possible by uh, India and Maharashtra. Shastra Maharashtra Nabir uh, rehabilitation of watershed ecosystem took place. In the next video, we are discussing about livelihood resilience through diversification, biodiversity conservation, and uh, protection, food security, enhanced nutritional status maintaining indigenous and local environmental knowledge sustainable development improved quantity and quality of fresh water increased health of soil leading to uh, greater water holding capacity increased productivity and less soil erosion reduced emission with use of manures cover crops etc next section for the discussion of mitigation enhanced adoptive uh, capacity at uh, landscape and uh, diversity uh, uh, agriculture uh, production through a number of activities including water harvesting and the encouragement of natural regeneration mitigation in the agriculture sector this is the new topic and we will discuss about the mitigation in agriculture in new sector uh, in agriculture sector so agriculture is directly responsible for an estimated 12 to 14% of total global greenhouse gas emission primarily from the use of fertilizers, rice cultivation and animal husbandry. 
another 30% or so of global greenhouse gas emissions are caused by deforestation and other land use change, much of which is land clearance for agricultural production. Addressing climate change requires that emissions reductions in the agriculture sector must be undertaken, but by whom and where? And how should the need to produce food and provide agriculture mitigation? The most important gases emitted by the agriculture sector are methane, CH4, and nitrous oxide. Rather than carbon dioxide CO2, methane emission come primarily from enteric gut uh, fermentation. Uh, it is the inner intestine system of the livestock. Uh, manure management, biomass burning, and rice production, nitrous oxide emissions come from fertilizer production, emissions from fertilizer, soil, manure management and biomass burning there are carbon dioxide emissions from the agriculture sector but these are primarily indirect emissions from deforestation initial land clearance for agriculture and other land use change also the regular tilling soil releases carbon that is stored in the soil so uh, from this slide, we can understand that agriculture is directly responsible for an estimated value to 14% of the total global greenhouse gas emissions. Agriculture is responsible for 12 to 14% greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, another study shows that 13% or so of the global greenhouse gas emissions are caused by deforestation. So, 13% is caused by deforestation for agricultural practices so how can we reduce these greenhouse gas emissions in which uh, the important gases are methane nitrous oxide carbon dioxide so we can reduce it by mitigation in the agriculture sector mitigation means the vulnerability of uh, an action which is taking place in agriculture sector so mitigation in the agriculture sector is a logical first step to determining who should undertake mitigation against actions and agriculture would be uh, to identify where the major emission come from in the sector and address them in particular livestock, soil from fertilizer use and rice production. An equitable approach to determining who is responsible for medication will use per person uh, capita emission data. One further essential parameter to integrate into the analysis is the importance of emission for food security and livelihood, particularly of the most vulnerable. The table on the following page compares emissions from major developed countries, South Asian countries, and several major developing countries in Southeast Asia for comparison. The question of mitigation potential. In contrast to methodology outlined above, find out who is responsible for the largest per capita emission and require uh, emission reductions from those countries first. A number of developed countries put em emphasis instead uh, on identifying where there is the greatest mitigation potential. Uh, often emission reductions are less uh, costly in developing countries. So developed countries argue that emission reduction should take place in countries of least cost and highest potential.
the proponents of uh, a mitigation potential approach often point to the potential to store uh, carbon in soils particularly in the degraded uh, lands of the developing world uh, wet lands have a similar potential to store carbon however a focus on mitigation potential and the land and wet lands of developing countries obscures uh, two very important considerations developed countries have a historic and current responsibility to address their agriculture emission developing country per capita emission in agriculture are often much lower than developed country emissions. Moreover, food security considerations require developing countries to focus first on ensuring the poorest and most vulnerable have food to eat. Carbon stored in soil cannot be considered as equivalent to permanent emission reductions. The storage is only temporary and highly reversible, for example, from soil disturbance from tillage temperature rise will likely cause more reversal so in contrast of the methodology outlined above uh, find out who is responsible for the largest per capita emission and require emission reduction from those countries first a number of developed countries put emphasis instead on identifying uh, fear there is the greatest mitigation potential so here we have discussed in this slide about the uh, responsible person uh, which we can engage mitigate the potential and the approach of the point to the potential store so uh, carbon and soil particularly in the related lands of the development world with have a similar potential to store carbon. However, a focus on mitigation potential in the land and wetland of developing countries obscures two very important considerations. Number one, developing countries have a historic and current responsibility to address their agriculture emissions. Uh, carbon stored in the soil cannot be considered as equivalent to uh, permanent. Uh, uh, emission reductions so in the next video we will discuss about permanent and temporary uh, approaches that provide permanent emission reduction or uh, and uh, temporary approaches that provide uh, temporary mitigation